Joining us right now is Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, am I overstating it? But the election's already been affected by Iran and our Secret Service inability to protect the president. No, Brian, you're not overstating it at all. To me, it's a scandal of the highest order. You have Iran interfering with our elections, hacking into Donald Trump's campaign, trying to disseminate the information. At the same time, they're trying to kill him. I think it's a reasonable question to ask, why is that the case? And it's because the Ayatollahs know that they can walk all over Kamala Harris just like they did to Joe Biden. They clearly favor Kamala Harris over Donald Trump because they know Donald Trump will stand up to them, just like he did when he killed Qasem Soleimani, Iran's terrorist mastermind. Donald Trump will finish the job with Iran. Kamala Harris will continue to mm -hmm. appease Iran. That's why Iran is trying to kill him and hack into his campaign. And what is the Biden administration doing about it? Nothing. They send out Merrick Garland and Tony Blinken, both of whom are impotent, just like their boss, to give some mealy mouth statement. What did Donald Trump say? That if this happened on his watch, he would blow the country and its city to smithereens. That's the kind of strong, clear, unequivocal message that an adversary like Iran needs to hear, and they're not hearing it from the Biden administration. You got this military background too, but Eli Crane, Eli Crane showed and I went and studied both these sites. He says the only reason why Trump wasn't hit is because these assassins are amateurs. If Hezbollah or Hamas was here, they would have been able to take him out. And so what? If this is not a mystery. They want him to do it. They want to do it. And their life will not be the same if he's elected. So you have to wonder what the next few weeks have in store for us. Well, Brian, we saw this just this week, as you said, that Donald Trump had to cancel plans for a rally in Wisconsin because our own government cannot protect a former president and a current nominee to be president. That is pathetic. Remember, the Secret Service answers to Joe Biden. Joe Biden could easily say, give Donald Trump the same level of protection that I receive. And right. if they say, well, we don't have enough manpower, we don't have enough resources, Joe Biden doesn't have to go to the beach or to his home in Delaware every weekend. You know, lots of Americans would be perfectly happy to stay at the White House for the next five weekends and watch college football or pro football or baseball playoffs. Joe Biden could get this done. He could okay. direct that Donald Trump get the same level of protection that he does and that Kamala Harris does, but he is not doing so. Senator, you and I uh, share a passion for foreign policy. Uh, you lived it. You sat there in, uh, fighting in war. <laughs> but we leave this world right now without a debate about foreign policy. This world right now is on fire. Look at the cover of the New York Post right now. This is the world that Joe Biden is leaving. The world's on fire. And then you have the Wall Street Journal. Biden leaves his successor a world of disorder between what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening in the Taiwan Straits, what's happening in Europe. That's not an overstatement. No, not at all, Brian. I mean, Joe Biden went to the United Nations this week and gave an embarrassing speech in which he tried to justify his record. I, I frankly don't see how Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Jake Sullivan and Tony Blinken can even show their face in public and argue with a straight face that the world is not on fire. To, frankly, I mean, they should slink off shamefacedly into the sunset for what's happened on their watch. On Donald Trump's watch, and for that matter, presidents came before him, you didn't have the largest land war in Europe since World War II. You didn't have the worst slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust. You didn't have China practicing invasions of Taiwan. This all happened on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's watch. They are, it's the worst administration on foreign policy since Jimmy Carter. Frankly, it makes Jimmy Carter look like Ronald Reagan. What worries me, and some people cheer this, I don't. <laughs> And that is a total pull out of Iraq. The last time we pulled out of Iraq quickly, we ended up getting ICE, ISIS. Remember the JV team? And then we ended up having to go back in with another administration. Do you fear the same scenario? Well, it's possible, Brian. It's more likely, given how weak that the Biden-Harris administration has been all along, to allow ISIS cells or Mil uh, militias that are backed by Iran to continue to strike our own troops without any retaliation in almost every case. So if we do take our troops out of Iraq and we haven't 
destroyed a lot of this enemy war-making capability or their terrorist fighters. There is a real risk you'd see a resurgence of, of ISIS or any other terrorist group that rises up in that vacuum. It's exactly what happened, of course, when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris withdrew our troops from mm -hmm. Afghanistan in such a disastrous fashion. And he took a bow for it at the general, in front of the General Assembly, said it was a great thing. Four presidents tried to get out, and I did, yes, embarrassed the country in the meantime. Senator Tom Cotton, thanks so much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.